everyone, Morgan here. So a lot of people ask me, why the desert? Why the heck would you choose the desert for your homestead? Um, now, you know, I get this question asked just all the time. And when I, at first when I was getting asked the question, I was like, what do you mean? Like, what's, what's wrong with the desert? The desert's great. But I get it, you know, the desert's probably not the first choice for a lot of people, you know? But the desert has so many advantages and disadvantages, but we have to think that most places have their advantages and disadvantages. Let me give you an example. So first of all, uh, the desert, while um, there's not a lot of water to be had like above ground, like there's not a ton of streams, there's not a ton of lakes, but there is a lot of water underground. The aquifers in the desert are usually really strong. Sometimes you can dig just a few feet and you can get to water. Sometimes it's more like a few hundred feet. It varies widely across the desert. Also, there are a lot of different types of deserts. Not all deserts are the same. Where I am in Arizona is not the same type of desert even just in New Mexico. And I'm also in the high desert, which is different than the low desert, okay? So the high desert, I'm at 4,500 feet. And so I get more wind, I get more rain, um, we get more snow. If any, we get snow. You know, the low desert generally won't have snow. And if they do, we'll definitely get more snow. Like we had snow this year. Um, we get, uh, while the low desert does get a monsoon season, in the high desert, we tend to get more rain just in general throughout the year. Now, as opposed to the low desert and the high desert versus, versus temperature, it's a lot cooler up here in the high desert. We have very cool temperatures compared to the low desert. The low desert, you know, like whenever we go to Tucson or Phoenix, they're low desert and it's always like 110 degrees while here it's like 100 or less. You know, I think we, I think we did breach like a hundred and maybe five. I think maybe we got to 110 one day, but like I said, it was one day. It really wasn't that long. Even our hundred degree temps in general were very low. So, you know, we might get, you know, a hundred degree days for like a few weeks, but as opposed to the low desert where they get a hundred degree weeks, degree days for a couple months or more, you know? So, and also our growing season is actually a, a lot different here in the high desert than the low desert. Um, but you know, plants tend to do a little bit better here in the higher desert just because we don't get such scorching heat. But in general, we do get more wind. So we do have to account for that. Like we get way more wind than the low desert. I mean, it is windy every single day here in the high desert. So uh, that's, that's a big difference. You know, it's just, it's so varying the climates and, and so that's, that's something that you really want to keep in mind just because, you know, you hear, oh, desert's hot all the time. Not really. Like we've actually had uh, cold weather since about November and it's uh, March of the time I'm making this video and I can't, and my last frost here is going to be end of April. So, you know, our, it's, it's really different here. While we do have like an extended growing season and I can still plant like a lot of, you know, cold crops and stuff like that, you know, our, it, I can't really plant totally year round unless I have some sort of greenhouse or something, you know, like the low desert, they can pretty much plant completely year round. Um, even cool crops and things like that, they can plant, you know, pretty much all the time, <laughs> but it's a little bit different here in the high desert, but, so um, water is definitely available. There are lots of places that have water in the desert, you know, like there's, there are creeks and streams and, and rivers and lakes. It just depends on where you are. There's actually a ton of lakes here in, in Arizona. Again, it just kind of depends on where you are. The nearest lake to us is actually like an hour and a half away, but the nearest river is only about 45 minutes away. Still not great, but we do have mountains literally all around us, um, which is great. There's uh, different climates up in there, you know, maybe easier to access water in those places. So, you know, um, the mountains being so close, and this is pretty much almost anywhere you go, um, in uh, Arizona at least, there are desert, there, I'm sorry, there are mountains just everywhere. It's beautiful here. 
And there are also a lot of wild edibles. There's a ton of wild edibles, uh, both plant and uh, meat. There's a ton of deer. There's um, a ton of uh, rabbits. There's a bunch of hogs. Um, there's, uh, in addition, there's also, you know, the plants. There's, there's yucca. There's, um, there's prickly pear. Um, there's chola. There's a whole bunch of um, wild edibles here. And so, you know, it just kind of depends on, again, where you are. Like, there's a lot more um, uh, cactus, like chola and prickly pear in the lower desert than there is in the higher desert. But, you know, I have definitely seen, you know, a lot of that stuff. We also have like pine cones, not pine cones, I'm sorry. We have uh, pine trees in the mountains in which have, you know, pine nuts. Um, there's just, there's a lot, you know, but you just gotta know what you're looking for. And that's gonna be the same no matter where you are. You just gotta know what you're looking for. A, a big advantage about being in the desert is the sun. I can be completely off grid. Well, we are completely off grid and using solar power alone. Now, another advantage about being in the higher desert, you can see, you know, there's the wind is blowing, you can see on my shirt, um, is I can get a wind generator and I can generate power even at night, you know, when, when there is no sun, we can generate that power. I mean, just last night we were having like 30 mile per hour gusts all night long. So wind generator is definitely something we're looking into as well. Um, alternative energy is a big bonus for being in the desert and also there's a lot of really creative ways that you can make a home here in the desert that don't work a lot of other places there's adobe there's um a straw house um a renaissance marine tv had mentioned uh doing a uh, tire home which i've i've definitely seen but it's not something that we're probably going to uh move in the direction of and then the last one the one that we're definitely going to be doing for our house is an earth sheltered house you don't have to get very deep in order for the earth to um, regulate temperatures of your home. So I'm super excited to uh, start the journey of our house build um, where we're going to be building an earth sheltered home. Again, we don't have to dig super deep, but another thing that we have to worry about here is caliche, which is about like two feet down. <laughs> so um, that's definitely something we have to look out for. Caliche is just really hard rock. So we need, you know, a really heavy duty tractor in order to get through that caliche to dig a little bit. But there's a lot of advantages here in the desert. You just have to know kind of what you're getting into no matter where you go, whether it's the desert, the north, you know, um, the, the Midwest, whatever it is that you're doing, look at that area and look at, you know, the, the advantages and disadvantages. Because I guarantee no matter where you are, there are advantages and disadvantages no matter where you go. You know, like um, I'm seeing people that still have snow and they're gonna have snow till like May, right? <laughs> so to me, that's a disadvantage because I wouldn't be able to plant until May and that's a very short growing season, you know what I mean? So you have until like May to like August or September, I mean, that's a very short growing season. So unless you wanna have like a greenhouse or something like that, I'm just saying there's advantages and disadvantages depending on where you go and what you want. Now, um, you know, the main thing that people always complain about, again, is the heat. There are ways to beat the heat, um, you know, like that earth sheltered home. Uh, Cody London was actually the one that inspired me to um, look at the earth sheltered home. And um, he was saying that it's, it's generally around 70 degrees, no matter the time of year. And he's in the high desert in Arizona, just like I am. The last advantage, the just abundance of land. There's an abundance of land and it's affordable. It's super affordable and it's super affordable to build upon, okay? And especially if you're in a lot of rural areas, it's rural building. So you can pretty much do almost anything that you want and you know, you won't be bothered. Of course, it depends on the county. It depends on, you know, where you are and that kind of thing. Really look very deep into uh, restrictions that you might have with uh, the county and stuff like that, being off grid. Some places don't like it. Arizona in general seems to be pretty open to it. Uh, there are still uh, places that have HOAs, so never, ever, ever, ever get into an HOA. Doesn't matter where you are, rural, city, 
avoid HOAs like the plague. If you have any questions about desert living, please don't hesitate to ask. I've been spending my time in the deserts uh, for the past 10 years, um, you know, camping, off-roading, hiking, all this stuff. So I'm very familiar with the desert. I love the desert. I think it's beautiful. There's lots of wood around here. You know, there's, there's lots of advantages here. But of course, you know, I think one of the main things is water. But as long as you have a, a well or access to a well, like we haul our water right now, um, you know, plus there's lots of alternative energy options out here <laughs> to be completely off the grid. Thank you all so much for watching Conquer Tomorrow by Preparing Today. And I will be talking a lot more on desert topics coming up on this channel. If you have any questions or want me to cover anything about desert preparedness or survival, put it down below in the comments section. Thank you all so much for watching Conquer Tomorrow by Preparing Today. I'll talk to you later. Bye.